so uh, the number one reason why rapists get away and do it again, not just rapists, but people who are physically abusive, is that the victims don't come forward. Now that's not entirely true, is it? As Teresa Mycelia has pointed out, and she has spoken with many victims of this very same heinous bullshit by the border police. She's got a list, same as me, of other victims. It's important for us to work together to change this. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I was trying to do with Darren O'Connor and with Zade Atkinson and with Betsy Prowell. But they were in different situations than me. They were in much different situations than me. Teresa Mycelia, she, she's been through a lot of the same shit as me. When I was a kid, I was raped, and the police didn't give a fuck. I was in the system, so I must be a liar. Even though I was in the system because my parents couldn't stay off the drugs or stay out of trouble with the law. That's why I was in the system. Really, the number one reason why rapists get away to do it again and again and again and again and again and again is because the police won't take a report. I mean, look at the number of times that the police have refused to take a report just from me. They wouldn't take a report about the assaults. They wouldn't take a report about the threats. They wouldn't take a report about the rapes when I was a child. They just wouldn't do it. The other thing that I've seen is that, uh, and this is documented too, this is part of them statistics they do at these colleges that you guys are so fond of. A lot of these statistics, well, I get them from the internet. I really do. I get them from certified organizations and certified schools. The things that I speak out about, this Teresa Mycelia lady, she's saying the same things I did. Hundreds of people in Boulder, Colorado are victims of this every year. The police just not wanting to do their jobs, but it's nationwide. The police know that there's no organization that is going to do a goddamn thing. You, like Teresa said, you get sent from one number to another, to another, to another, to another. And you're fucking frustrated by the end of it. And you're reliving that story, everything that you've gone through. You're reliving with every one of these people that what you have to say doesn't really matter. What they have to say is, they did the same things to her that they did to me. They locked me up charged me with a crime to prevent me from making a report against the police officer. And then they fed me bullshit. The stuff that uh, the police told me was completely different from the stuff that my public pretenders were telling me. So was it my public pretenders that were lying to me or was it the police? This needs to be investigated. This is all stuff that I've had to deal with the repercussions of. When you don't have the money for a lawyer and you don't have support, you're fucked. I don't need people to help prolong my agony. If you're not going to help me get an honest day in court like you said, don't rub it in my face that you prolonged my agony. Because you should have come forward. You could have helped by coming forward. Then there's people like Lexi Woods who, well, when she got beaten up, she wanted my help. But she couldn't come forward and tell the truth in my case. It's a good thing I saved those screenshots, but they're in a stolen phone.
I got people all over the place that want me to go there. And most of them, I just can't go. It's not that these are bad people. It's that they have shitty fucking personalities. Ogre, man, he's got a fucking permanently shitty fucking attitude. I can't be around that. I need to be around positivity. And I don't have that. You know, positive conversations, similar likes and interests, an actual conversation beyond somebody at Starbucks saying thank you for opening the door for them, or the people behind the counter laughing at one of my quick quips. I got good jokes. I'm, I'm witty as fuck. There's a lot of victims of this, and a lot of people are like, I'm too afraid to come forward, or I'm going through the same thing too. Well, then work together with me instead of hiding. I've been fighting for your rights since well before this happened. On my Facebook, I, I posted up something old. It's from 2014. That's when uh, Brian Farmer died, and I found uh, Danny dead behind the pedestrian shop. That was uh, when Sarah Rubiola disappeared. It was when Nathan Forrester was found dead in Wyoming. These all hit close to home. It was the year Desiree got stabbed and Mobley got stabbed. And DJ got stabbed. When Spencer Crawford killed his best friend Angus. These all hit close to home. I've known people that were beaten to death in Boulder, Colorado. And the police called the uh, cause of death. Well, they didn't cause it, call it homicide. Unknown. That's what they use. When the college kids beat a homeless person to death. They don't want to investigate those college kids. They want their town to look pretty and clean. So they sweep the rapes under the rug. They sweep the beatings and the murders under the rug. They won't do their job. What do you expect from the people who fucked up the Jean Benet Ramsey case? These are hobo hunters, not police officers. They don't keep you safe. They make you more unsafe by p forcing people into desperate situations. And people in desperate situations do desperate things. You think that single mother really wants to come steal all your shit? Fuck no. She thought she was living the good life. Her, her loving husband, her two wonderful daughters. Then her daughters get raped by her husband. This guy that she trusted. And, uh... She ends up homeless because she can't cover the bills. She just wants her kids back, but the state took them because she couldn't afford them. She didn't know her husband was going to do that shit. She thought she was doing the right thing by turning them in. Now she's homeless and doesn't have her kids, and her kids are getting raped more in the system. And I'm, I'm supposed to shut up. I'm supposed to pretend it's not happening and turn a blind eye like everyone else. I can't. These victims came to me for a reason. And I went to the cops, and the cops wouldn't listen. And that's how I knew, before all this happened, how it was all going to go down. That's how I knew, sitting there in the back seat of that cruiser in Chesapeake, Virginia... That's how I knew it was going to happen. Experience. This girl was high risk. I knew how high risk she was. A lot of people wanted to play victim and then tell me I was the one playing victim. Excuse me, says I. How many people assaulted you over this? Did the police take your report? The number one reason that predators get to do it again, 
they say is because the victims don't come forward. But then you see what happens when they do come forward. There's no incentive for these people to come forward. You come forward about r getting raped, you're ostracized and shamed and belittled and... And the dude who did it gets away with it. Or he gets 45 days. What a fucking joke. Tried to fucking choke a woman to death and the man gets 45 days. Police officers in Adams County are raping people. And getting slaps on the fucking wrist. So the victims, they're afraid to come forward. I knew that almost all of the people that I exposed, their victims were going to protect them. I already knew this. I knew this from the psychology of growing up with victims. Growing up with little girls who cut on themselves because daddy raped them and mommy didn't care. Then those little girls are forced to normalize and they know nobody's going to listen to them. And then they get quiet and they pace and they get treated like they're a bad person for it. They have to normalize. They have to laugh and joke with the man who raped them because mom doesn't want to listen. And after that, that little girl is too afraid to come forward about it again. She doesn't want to disrupt the happy and make everybody angry. Natalie had that same issue. I had that same issue. I don't anymore. If you're going to turn a blind eye to it, you don't get to bitch when it happens to you. You don't get to whine about your rights like so many have. After what these people did to me, and then they want to complain when I do it back. And I haven't given them back one one thousandth of what they gave me. And at least when I gave it back to these people, it was over things they actually did. I admitted to my crimes. I was forced to break the law. Nobody should have to break the law in order to get the cops to do their fucking job. Nobody should have to break the law in order to get an outside agency to take a look at what's going on. Because you know what? Multiple jurisdictions across multiple states. They use jurisdiction as an excuse not to look at everything that happened and everything that went on. Not to investigate any of the witnesses or talk to them. Any witness that was not against me, the police refused to take a report from. What that lady tried to call a report yesterday? Are you fucking kidding me? I need an officer here to identify the woman on that camera. The people at Starbucks this morning, they told me, Hey, Sean... That is so fucked up. The police should have been here to look at our cameras. We can't just take it down to the police station. We can't just turn it over to you. There's laws against that. The police have to show up. I'm like, I know, I told them. The police already know this. They just won't do their fucking jobs. Harassing homeless people for sleeping is more important than actually going out and finding actual criminals who are committing actual crimes like theft, like rape, like murder. The cops in Wyoming were uh, actually a lot nicer than the ones in Colorado. They're a lot better class of police officer. But they're still police officers. So they're still the bad guys and they still do bad things over your paranoia. It's not that I'm doing these things, it's that you're paranoid that I would. So I get punished as if I did. Meanwhile, the people who are doing those things get no punishment at all. The number one reason my victims don't come forward, they're too fucking afraid, duh. They're afraid nobody will listen. They're afraid they'll get ostracized. They're afraid they'll get treated like me.
The cops outright refused to collect evidence. There is a lot of evidence that could convict, convict both of Natalie's stepmothers. That's Danica Garner and Rochelle Shelley Campbell. There's enough evidence that has been lost to convict Tim Beeson and Ted Bollinger. But I also have enough saved to convict Tim Beeson and Ted Bollinger. And Alicia Bollinger too. The things that they did at my grandma's funeral are illegal as fuck. The fact that the police officer did not take a written report. Blew it off. And so did the sheriff. You know that report that uh, Molly Smith went in there to help me to force the police to take. I was trying to report against the police officer in question as well as Alicia Bollinger and Ted Bollinger and the bullshit that they were pulling. This was months after uh, Officer Jordan Anderson should have done that to begin with. And the officers were hell-bent and entrenched in making sure they protected that officer who had done wrong. Just like Candace, instead of coming forward with the truth, she decided to pull out the parts of our conversation that make me look like a bad guy and slander my name, which resulted in multiple GoFundMes that could have helped me out. That's when I needed the money the most to be able to fight this. But when I threatened to... Uh, turn in Officer Michael Beard for what he had done. That's when Candace started her fucking evil bullshit. Which led me to believe that she might have lied about that situation. But then again, I was in the situation. I remember how Officer Michael Beard treated me over that pocket dial. I remember the pocket dial. I remember dispatch coming through to let them know that I had called them while I was talking to him. I remember Shelly calling me while I was talking to him to tell me she was all right. I remember getting a hold of Ray Anna Ingersoll to try to get Miss Shelly somewhere safe. That's when Cara Mia, she kicked everybody out of that group, got rid of the GoFundMe, and uh... Posted up all that mean shit. See, and you look at Sword and Scale. They don't post up any of the truth. They post up the little bits and pieces that make me look like a bad guy. That's all they're interested in is continuing to slander my name. Same as the police. Same as the Bollingers. If I'd have been allowed an honest goddamn day in court, I wouldn't have to speak out on Facebook. If the cops would do their fucking jobs, I wouldn't have to speak out on Facebook. I wouldn't have to get onto YouTube. The victims are victimized repeatedly. The number one reason why people who commit these crimes continue to get away with it is because the victims don't come forward. So one rapist can rape hundreds of people as long as those people are too afraid to come forward. As long as those people are treated like Teresa Mycelia, when they do, people aren't going to want to come forward. They're going to be too afraid. Meanwhile, there's officers in Boulder, Colorado who raped people and then had them treated the same way that I was with the uh, injections and the refusing to take a report, the arresting them and then saying that somebody who's been arrested can't make a report. They did everything they could to not look at the evidence, to make sure that it was lost. It's called plausible deniability. I never saw it, so I can't say nothing. Well, I've been trying to show it to you, you fucking bastards. But I'm not a pretty girl, so my rights don't matter. Isn't that right? I'm not rich. So my case doesn't matter. 
I'm not Donald Trump, so it's not newsworthy. Although the news had no problems destroying my name and slandering my name and not taking my side. I don't mean not being on my side. I mean only looking at one side of the story. That Jennifer Dzowski woman, she's not a reporter. She's a propaganda artist. She's nice sometimes. Does that make it okay what she did? No. Does that make what Mike Boudet did okay? No. And fuck that dude. He destroyed evidence that he and his dude who took the report from me agreed that they would turn it over to the police. Instead, they chopped it up to try to make me seem like I was some sort of bad guy. That email from Lan from uh, Natalie Engel or Natalie Bollinger. Yeah, Danica Garner verified that came from Natalie's email. Now the shit that Tim Beeson was saying, this Mike Boudette guy is like, and we have no reason to believe that they would be fake. But then with me, he's like, well, we have no way to know if this is right or not. He's already decided that he wants to turn people against me. He's already decided my guilt. He's already decided he hates me because I'm homeless and hates me because I'm broke and hates me because I was called mentally ill and called a stalker. When in reality, I have every right to be pissed off at these fucking pieces of shit. I should have been allowed to defend myself in a court of law instead of this goddamn shit show. But the cops did the same thing to me that they did to Teresa Massilia. Fuck the police and fuck this goddamn country.